don't go to bars alone. Um, I don't drink anywhere regularly. But is that really a bad thing? Why, why are you trying to push women into bars, Rosie? <laughs> because I think they're going to meet really great people and make lifelong friends in bars and really find community in a great neighborhood bar. I, I'm not saying, you know, go to a, a fancy hotel bar, go to, uh, you know, a really luxurious cocktail bar. Once in a while, I love doing those things. But I think you're corner bar, your neighborhood bar, can just be a really surprising source of comfort mm. and stability and, and an anchor in a person's life. Yeah, I mean, I guess, Rosie, the key is finding a place and, and sort of becoming a regular there, because I know I was having a conversation with a, a, a few friends of mine, a few female friends of mine, who just talked about they, they hate going to bars, uh, whether it's alone, obviously, or whether it's in a group, because when they go out, there's just this assumption, it seems, among every male in the bar that they are there looking to, you know, to, right. to meet, and they get approached, and they get, you know, prop all this you know, terrible right, stuff, right. And cheesy <laughs> pickup lines, and hey, I, so, I, I mean, I guess, I guess, what, I guess what I'm saying, what is the key to finding the kind of place you're talking about where, where you're not going to have to run into the, you know, Johnny Sleazeball? Sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, to be fair, you could run into Johnny Sleazeball anywhere. That could happen. Um, but I think if, it's a, if it's, an, it's a bar that's already rooted where you live, a neighborhood bar, once you start going and once you start to get to know the bartenders, you sort of become part of the family. And I know as a bartender and as a regular, I've always looked after the people who I serve at the bar where I work. And I've always felt looked after by the bartenders I've come to know really well. And I think a lot of it has to do with reading a bar. You walk into a bar, it's really loud, it's really crowded. You can kind of get that meat market feeling from mm. certain bars right away. Mm -hmm. Where a much more low-key, friendly, unpretentious neighborhood bar um, won't send out those signals because they're not really there. It's just a place to completely relax and be oneself and you don't have to get dressed up. And, uh, and it's very easy to ease into regularhood in places like that. What about pregnant ladies mm. in bars? No, Bad idea. Just <laughs> uh, I'm not endorsing that. <laughs> so uh, the there's been a huge decline of community institutions in America, well documented in the book Bowling Alone. Uh, is that what this is really about, finding a community in a country where there aren't a lot of places to have a real community? Absolutely. That's pretty much what this is all about. Um, I, I think it's true that community has gotten harder to find, but I still think we all yearn for it. It. And when I started going to bars a long time ago, probably a little younger than I should have, um, I didn't know that was what I was looking for. But the, the more I became part of bar culture, I realized that that was the place that wasn't home, wasn't school, wasn't work, uh, where I could meet people and have great conversations and, and actually learn from my fellow drinkers. Rosie, yeah. before we get out of here, I just want to say that, uh, you know, huge admirer of the work of your father, Thank Dick you. Schaap, legendary writer. Yeah. Uh, um, your brother Jeremy's carving out a nice little career. Go you know, big mad. red. Go <laughs> big red. He's got big things in his future, I think. I think but so. um, you know, you, t you say you're monogamous with your bars, and you b you delineate your chapters on the different bars that mm -hmm. you loved in New York. So, uh, dive bars or classy bars? Which do you prefer, and why? I kind of like both, and I think what I what I like best is actually something between the two. I, I don't think a neighborhood bar is inevitably a dive. I think a dive is a class of its own, and there are many dives I love. Um, but you know, I, th I think one difference in, in a good neighborhood bar rather than a dive, uh, you can rely on finding a relatively clean restroom, which I really appreciate. <laughs> uh, so that's a little bit of a difference. A good clean neighborhood bar, but uh, I, I love a dive on a good divey night too. Uh, Rosie Touré mentioned your brother there, and it just, I just had a flashback. I remember watching oh, yeah? probably his most famous interview with, with Bobby oh, Knight. I was yeah. in, but I was in a bar watching that. And I remember having a conversation a few years ago with somebody about whether televisions in bars are a good thing or a bad thing, whether they kind of they ruin the community vibe because everybody starts paying attention to the TV and not talking to each other, or maybe they foster more conversation because people come and they have this sort of shared experience watching the game or mm -hmm. the Bobby Knight interview, whatever oh. it is. Do you, what do you think of that? I, 
I, I was having a panic attack during that interview. <laughs> I thought he was going to strangle my brother. He <laughs> needed a drink. And I was at home. I wasn't at a bar. Um, you know, I, I think uh, that can also go both ways. I'm a sports fan myself, and uh, I love to go to my local soccer bar in Brooklyn and watch matches there with other people and get kind of loud. Um, but most of the time when I'm hanging out in a bar, I really um, put a premium on conversation. So anywhere where there's a blaring TV or the music's too loud, I don't think that really facilitates the kind of community that, uh, that I love most about bars. Right. Okay, Rosie Schaap, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you so much. It was really fun. And a quick shout out to at Bonamont who got...